Glory to God. And one of our central God. district pastors is, uh, with the Pentecostal Church of God, his name's Doyle uh, Ankrum. He is recently, he's just passed away. He's been in hospice for a few days, and, but uh, he's just passed away. We need to pray for their church and for their family. Yes, Lord. Father God, we just lift them up. Touch them, Father. Strengthen them, Father, through this hard time, Father. We just give you all the praise, Father, all the glory. You are worthy of our praise. Oh, we magnify you for your goodness, Father. He was a mighty man of God. We just thank you, Lord, that he served you, Father, and he was that he's home with you. We give you all praise. Father, comfort his family and his church family, Father, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are worthy, Lord. You're a mighty yes, God. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. We love you, Lord. Jesus, we, we glorify you, Father. Yes, praise God. Bless him, Father, in the whole thing. Yes. And I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name. Thank well, you. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise God is good. Yes, he is. God is good. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Glory Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. I keep reaching for my glasses and I've got them on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy's missing hers a lot of times and they're on her head, but I'm never right, Kathy. Can't she blame it on me. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Father God, we just pray you take this word, Father, and grain it deep within our hearts, Father. Help us, Lord, to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. We give you all praise and all glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are worthy, yes, Lord. Lord. You're a mighty God. We ask it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank Amen. You, well, glory. Turn with me to uh, turn with me to uh, John chapter sixteen, verse thirty-three. If you have a red letter edition, this is in red. Jesus said this, These things have I spoken unto you, that you might have peace. In the world, in this world, you shall have tribulation. You say you shall. You shall. You shall. That means all kinds of trouble. Just because we're living for God doesn't mean we're not going to have troubles. We're going to have all kinds of trouble in this life. Just like our brothers in the world. Just like our brethren in the world. They have troubles Everybody has troubles. And it doesn't matter we're, mean we're doing something evil. Now, if we're doing something evil, then we'll have special, extra trouble. But just because something bad happens to you doesn't mean that you've been in sin. It just means that bad things happen to people. The only difference is, for a Christian, is we're able to be overcomers. Yes. We've been made more than conquerors yes. through Christ Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. So we can overcome because he overcame. So in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Say, be of good cheer. Be of good, good cheer. cheer. Be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. I used to think, well, that's nice. He's overcome the world, but I'm here right now. But Christ is in us. Yes. So because he's overcome the world, he can help us to be overcomers, but we've got to put our trust totally, completely in him. When, he, when we do that, yes. then he becomes our strength. That is right. Then he becomes our strong place. If we'll keep our eyes on Jesus, no matter what's happening around us, then everything else that's happening around us, it shrinks because we've got our eyes focused on Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why when Peter began to walk on the water, he was strong in faith as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus. And he was walking on the water. And then something happened. The wind picked up a little bit more. And the waves got a little bit stronger. Yes. And suddenly he took his eyes off Jesus and began to look around him. And the Bible says that he began to sink. And he cried out to Jesus. He said, Lord, save me. Lord, sozo me. Lord, help me. And so Jesus reached out and grabbed him by the hand. And he didn't say, he sank. It says he began to sink. That's a miraculous right there. Yes, it is. But he has began to sink. That's right. But Jesus reached out and picked him up. And he said, wherefore did you doubt? Why did you doubt? did you doubt? Well, how he doubted was he got his eyes off, the, off of Jesus and on the circumstances. When we get our eyes on the circumstances, 
we're we are going to we're going to sink, folks. We're going to fall if we get our keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Then we'll stand strong. Amen. Then we'll be able to to only see Him. You know, if you put your finger in front of your face and you put look at it and then bring it up close to it and keep your eye right on it. That's all you can really see. Yeah, everything else is blurry. But if you look at everything else, you won't ever see that finger. That's right. We need to keep our eye fixed on Jesus. Amen. Make that the center place of our life. Amen. God will take disturbing circumstances and he'll make, give you, make you victorious through them. Yes, he will. God can take what the devil means to destroy you Amen. Yep. Amen. and make you strong, yes, he can. prosper you, and bless you. God can do that. He can do that. He can do that. Yes, he can. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. There was a man named Joseph. He had his father's name was his father's name was uh, Jacob, which God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And so Joseph was his youngest child until they had another child. But Joseph, he was his child of old age. And in Genesis chapter thirty-seven, verse three, said, "Now Israel or Jacob." Loved Joseph more than all his children. He loved him more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. He was the child that he had in his old age. And so he made him a coat of many colors, literally in the Hebrew. That means a, a long sleeve coat that was long, tunic. But it, it was a, a coat that gave a position of authority that he gave him that. And then, and then the next verse says, And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. In other words, they became furious when their father gave him favor over them. But God, in everything Joseph went through, now Joseph went through some stuff because his brothers sought to kill him. And then they finally threw him in the pit and then they, then they sold him into slavery. And he went to Potiphar's house. And God's favor and blessing was upon him in the midst of being a slave. God blessed him. And because Potiphar saw that God blessed him, he made him head over everything in his household. And then Potiphar's wife, she, she got to looking at him. And she wanted him. So she was pursuing him. And he, he stayed away from her, and finally one day he came into the house, and it was just him and her, and she was determined to have him. He was her property. And he went out, ran, you know the Bible says flee fornication. So he fled fornication, but he left his coat behind. And then, and then she was so furious that she told her husband that he tried to attack her. And her husband became furious, and he sold him, and he put, had him put in prison. His, his, his Master was the chief of the of Egypt. Anyhow, he threw him in prison, and he was in prison. And God's favor was upon him. He was blessed of God, and so no matter what position he went into, God rose him to the top. Yeah. And so they made him head over all the prisoners because they saw that God's favor was on him. And while he was in there. While he was in there, there was two guys from the Pharaoh's household that came in, came into prison. And he told about their dreams, and they came true. And he told one of them, he said, Now you go when you tell the king. You tell the king about me, but he forgot about it. And so a few years went by, two years went by. And finally, the king had some dreams, and he couldn't find any of his wise men that could help him. So then this baker, he remembered, Oh, I remember this guy in prison. He helped us with dreams. He said, God knows dreams. If God gives you a dream, God knows the God knows the interpretation of the dream. So they called on Joseph and and they brought him he told, and, and he told the, the, the Pharaoh the dream and he told him the, what it meant and, and Pharaoh said, wow you're a wise man. He saw the favor and blessing of God. So he made him head over everything in, in Egypt and except for him. He was headed over everything else in Egypt. And he was able to spare not only the country of Egypt, but his own country. Just like God had showed him in his dreams. 
So even though the devil meant to destroy him, he exalted him through the things that he was tormented with.